We are just past the bottom of the hour. You're watching CNN. Let's talk about that massive earthquake that hit Nepal. Uh, I was actually not at all surprised to seismologists. Experts have long known that Kathmandu, the capital, uh, was in the crosshairs of some seismic activity. Dr. Benjamin Crooker joins me from Fordham University. He's a physics professor and he manages the school's seismic observatory and he's flanked with a seismometer, which we will get into in just a moment. But first, Professor, welcome. Thank you very much, Brooke. Um, let's get a, let's get a little wonky because because I'm kind of curious. I mean, I, everything I was reading, Nepal's on the convergent zone in the Himalayas, where where you know the Indian and the Eurasian tectonic plates collide. I mean, can, can you explain for me this part of the world and why this part of the world is really capable of producing major major quakes? Well, if you've ever watched a pot of pasta boiling, you see the water rise in places and fall in places, and India is sort of like a piece of pasta floating on top of that water being pushed around. In the case of the Earth, radioactive elements deep in the Earth cause that same kind of upwelling in the mantle and push the continents around, the great plates of the Earth around. And it happens that one of those upwellings is pushing India north and it's colliding with the Asian plate, which is a separate plate, and that's what causes the giant peaks like the Himalayas. And basically, as those two plates run into each other, the, the ground, the plate, begins to fold up because it's sort of stuck. And then at some point, that releases. And that's what causes the earthquake. It's released energy from the whole continent being sort of compressed and pushed up against Asia for a period of time. And then suddenly, it releases. Okay, I'm having geology 101 flashbacks. This is this is it's fascinating. But but here's here's really my next question because I've heard on one hand you really can't predict quakes, but at the same time it was just a week ago, professor, that you had these experts actually in Kathmandu saying, "Listen, um, uh, the, the the next big one what was imminent. How did they know it was coming, and why couldn't they predict precisely when?" Well, some of it's just about time. You measure the time since the last earthquake. You know India is moving north at a certain rate of speed, which we can measure actually using GPS. And so we know, even though the whole continent is moving north, that the, the con con convergence zone has not moved. We haven't had an earthquake. And so we know the pressure is building up there. But this kind of thing is really going on 10 kilometers deep underground to 50 to 100 kilometers deep. So knowing rock has finally reached the breaking point and is about to release is the really hard part that we really can't do reliably yet. Okay. And, and here we are in New York. You're at Fordham University, which is practically across the street from where I'm sitting here at Time Warner Center. And we're talking about a place, you know, half a world away in Nepal. You have this seismometer next to you. Were you able to detect what happened in Nepal? Yes. Um, this, this instrument's capable of measuring earthquakes anywhere in the world down to about a magnitude 5. So the quake that happened in Nepal was huge. And it caused the Earth to ring for hours afterwards. And we could see the ringing. It's much like you strike a bell. You can hear the bell ring for a long time afterwards. It took about 20 minutes for the earthquake waves to travel all the way around the world and get to us. But once that happened, then we had activity for the next couple of hours. And it continued to ring, as we know, still these um, aftershocks. And then you have these landslides and mon monsoon season is just a couple of months away. This is it's not a not a positive outlook for this part of the world. Uh, Benjamin Crooker there at Fordham University. Thank you so much to you. and. Uh, um, your, your underground vault and the, the, the seismometer. Let me move along because coming up next.